the phosphogypsum also, I wanted to make a point on it too, Popeye, is that the phosphogypsum will be where it's at on these stacks because there's nowhere in the world you can dump it. You can't take it to a dump. Nobody will take it because it's radioactive. So wherever they got it stacked is where it's going to be unless technology one day, you know, maybe after we're dead and gone, finds a way to decontaminate uh, it. But uh, when, when a phosphate company goes out of business or they shut a stack down, they cap it. It's there. And it's going to be there right on. And the, the radiation's there. And the dust blows off of them. And, uh, you know, it's you know it's just it's the way it is. In Central Florida, you know, they, they just thousands of acres of these things. It ain't like one or two here and there. And there's, we got several hundred acres up here of, of, of stacks. And there's cancer clusters in certain areas of the state, and you, you got to wonder if those two correlate to one another. When you say that they cap the stack off, what is that process? They pretty much drain the the uh, toxic pond water out of there. And a matter of fact, it's going on right now at the at one of the stacks out here that they're where they've shut down the plant, so they're no longer using that process water. And you know what they're doing with it is they're draining it, and they're running it down a ditch, and they're putting limestone in it to raise the pH because it's very acidic, and it's going right into the Swanee River. State knows it, and it's full of fluoride, it's full of lead, arsenic, all kind of heavy metals, and and, and it's going on as we speak today. And uh, what's so sad is that the Florida Department of Environmental Protection and the EPA, they know a lot about what I'm talking about. These people aren't stupid. But they're letting it go on, and the reason I know this is because uh, it was right after I wrote the book, I knew of violations out there that needed to be confronted. Because uh, I didn't want other people to get sick like I got sick. And, uh, you know, it's just the right thing to do. You see something wrong, you're supposed to, to speak up. So I called uh, the EPA and told them. Well, no matter of fact, uh, I called them, but it was later on. I filled out a, a reported environmental violation online on the computer. The EPA's got a site. I filled out all the paperwork, told them exactly what it was, and told them where to find it. And they had a place down there, you know, you could remain anonymous or you could tell them who you were. Well, I told them who I was because I wanted them to know that I knew what I was talking about and they needed to investigate this and put a stop to it. Enough's enough when you're making people sick. So, sure enough, uh, a U.S. Marshal called me out of Tampa and wanted to come up here and talk to me. And I told him to, to come on up. So he loaded up in the car in a few days. We made an appointment, and he showed up at my house. He showed up here with two Florida Department of Environmental Protection uh, people. And they were two separate cars. One was U.S. EPA. The other one was Florida. They came in the house, we sat around my kitchen table, and I told the guys what was going on, and I said, look, I've carried this on my shoulder now for years, and it, you know, I said, I, I've done all I can do, and it's time for you guys to step up and, you know, do, you know, do what you need, you know, what you need to do. I gave them documents, I gave them proof, is what I called it, and they promised me that they were going to investigate and they were going to put a stop to some of this stuff. And I said, well, the only thing I ask of you is to get back with me and tell me what you found and, and, and what you're going to do about it. Years passed, not a word. I picked up the newspaper here, uh, I don't know, about a year ago. Headlines read, such and such company fine $2 million for sulfur dioxide emissions. 
And that's what I had turned in. But it was several years after I had reported it. So I said, well, God, you know, why didn't they come back and, uh, and tell me about it? You know, they didn't. So I emailed several in the EPA, one at a time, trying to get a little closure on this thing. And every one of them would come back, message deleted, unread. And, uh, you know, we're supposed to put our faith in uh, the Florida Department of Environmental Protection and the EPA to, to protect our water and to protect our air and make sure these big corporations aren't poisoning us. Well, I don't have any faith whatsoever that they're doing their job. I think they're going through the motions, but I just don't think, uh, you know, I ain't going to go so far as to say there's money changing hands, but it's it's the way it looks to me. So you had three people show up. You had an investigator from the federal EPA, an investigator from the Florida EPA, and a deputy U.S. marshal show up at your door to talk to you because of your emails. One from the EPA, the federal government, Mm -hmm. and the other two was from Florida, the FDEP, which, you know, is supposed to do Florida, you know, but I went to the EPA first because I didn't think the FDEP were doing their job to start with, so I went to the feds. Well, the feds called them. So when they come out here, everybody's still in the same basket. You understand? Oh yeah, everybody's everybody's working hand in hand. So were they receptive to anything you had to say, or would, did you feel that they were just kind of take you know taking what you had to say and then blowing you off? Uh, no, I think they were listening very carefully because uh, I think they knew that I knew what was going on. They they would look at each other as I would talk and show them documents, and you know I could even name. I could even name the, uh, uh, you know, the pieces of equipment and what they were called. In other words, you know, uh, anybody, you could have, you know, you could have went out there yourself, you know, with the numbers I gave them and where it was at, and you would have found where the problems were. So they knew that I knew what was going on, and they also knew that now I knew they knew that I knew. That's kind of a tongue twister there, but it's the truth. But but anyway, what I'm what I'm saying is is that when you report something, you know they got this site. You report a violation. Well, you do that. You expect somebody, you know, if if, if it's credible, in which it was, and you and you interview with the people, and uh, you know it wasn't like I was somebody driving by in a car. I worked out there 21 years. I was an area supervisor out there. I didn't dig ditches. I knew the plants. I helped them start up every phosphoric acid plant they had out there but one. So I knew those plants, supervised them every day, and knew the ins and outs. You know, I knew the secrets. I knew where pollution was going on. I knew what they reported and what they didn't report. And so they found me very credible. I just... I just don't think that that they really want to hear it because, you know, you've heard the old saying, uh, sacrifice a few for the good of the many. And I think that's the attitude they take. You know, they know a few people's going to get cancer here and there, and they know people's going to get leukemia, and they know, uh, you know, some of the people's going to be up with the arthritis. And all this stuff, you know, that fluoride causes, but I think that's their attitude, a sacrifice a few for the good of the many. And I think that we can do a better job getting these poisons and keeping these poisons out of our air and water. It might cost a little more money, but I think we can do a better job, but we don't have to sacrifice anybody. <laughs>